So today I want to take a look at the anatomy of the foot. So the foot itself is something that often you know we don't consider that much. You sort of pop your, sh your, your foot into your shoe and you consider that you've almost got something uh, which is solid. But of course the foot itself is highly movable and if you take your shoes and socks off and just look at your toes and look at your feet you'll see that the, the, the foot can be moved in all sorts of directions. So essentially we've got 26 individual bones in the foot and that's what gives us this myriad of different movements. And we can divide the bones into three sections. So at the back here we've got the rear foot and that consists of the heel and the, the ankle bone. In the centre we've got the midfoot and that consists of a number of block-like bones and then we've got the forefoot. So if you compare it to the hand you could say well this is the area of the ankle so this would be the rear foot which would be equivalent to the wrist then you've got a section of block-like bones which give you the movement of the wrist and then you have the hand bones and the finger bones and it's exactly the same in the foot so we have two shin bones on the outside we have the thinner of the two called the fibula and on the inside the tibia and those two come together to form a dome shaped ankle joint which enables us to move the the joint forwards and back as we're walking and as we're running and then at the back here we've got our heel bone the calcaneum but in between the ankle joint and the heel bone we've got another bone called the talus and the talus makes a joint with the heel bone and so we call this joint the subtaloid joint and the advantage of that is that we can have a relatively solid strong ankle but we can also have a certain amount of movement of the heel bone itself and very often after severe injuries, particularly injuries where you fall heavily on your heel, you, you actually fracture the heel bone, the movement at the subtaloid joint can be limited. Okay, so next then, as we come down, we've got these series of block-like bones, and these are important. They form the midfoot, and these are important for the twisting movements of the ankle and the foot itself. So here we've got the navicular bone called so-called because it's sort of boat shaped and then we have three block like cuneiform bones and on the outside we have our cuboid bone and the cuboid bone is the one which is sometimes injured with lateral ankle sprain so when you you turn and twist onto your ankle but each of these individual bones forms a joint with its neighbour and so when you have stiffness um, in these joints it can limit movement of the forefoot so if you've had an ankle injury or a foot injury or a fracture perhaps and you've had a lot of swelling within this area often movements in the midfoot are limited and that can give you pain with walking and so simple exercises walking in bare feet walking on an uneven surface these types of things can be used as an exercise to move the individual joints and a physiotherapist will often mobilize the joints so they'll often take a couple of the bones between their fingers and then move one on the other to try to limit that um, stiffness in the joint and then we have our toe bones and they consist of two sets really we've got those which are within the foot and we call those the tarsal bones and then we've got our metatarsals which are the individual toes the sort of pinkies as it were at the end so we've got movement between the toes and the midfoot and then or between the large toe bones and the midfoot and then we've got movement between the large toe bones and the little toe bones and those those can be limited they can be stiff or of course they can be hypermobile but the whole foot itself um, is a tremendous design because it has to swap between two functions when you put your heel heavily down onto the ground 
the foot needs to be strong and then as you uh, you move forwards the foot has to be uh, more flexible so we call it a mobile adapter when the toes start to move and we call it a more rigid lever at heel strike so how do those two change and why are they important well because when we put the foot onto a flat surface you can see that the toes and the heels contact the flat surface but we form an arch and this arch here is called the longitudinal arch and then the arch over around the toe bones is called the transverse arch so this is where you often get a pad of thick hard skin and the transverse arch so our longitudinal arch here then is held up by muscles and by an important structure called the plantar fascia. So as we put our weight onto the foot, as we strike the heel down and the weight moves forwards, the foot has a tendency to flatten and the strength of this arch is maintained by the plantar fascia and by the strong foot muscles. So if you have weaker foot muscles or you spend a lot of time on your feet you can sometimes get a condition called plantar fasciitis or more accurately um, plantar heel pain and what happens there is that the plantar fascia starts to change it starts to thicken and you get pain occurring where it attaches at the heel bone so we've got problems with the stiffness or lack of movement or correct movement at the individual joints and then we've got um, effects on the soft tissues and then of course the whole thing has to move and it moves with with muscle and the muscles on the outside are called the peroneus muscles and then you have muscles on the front which are called the anterior tibial muscles and then some of the powerful shin muscles act on the inner aspect and then of course at the back here we've got our calf muscles our gastrocnemius and our soleus so we have the bulk of our muscles along the shin bones and these send off very long strong um, tendons which come down to the individual toes and so we can get irritation of the tendons um, as they come on the inside here so, um, so-called posterior tibial tendon syndrome we can get irritation on the outside or irritation at the front and then finally of course these flat shin um, muscles can start to swell and become painful and we get so-called compartment syndrome or more popularly called shin splints so we've got a lot which goes on with the foot and the ankle and the shin bones so hopefully that quick tour of anatomy will be helpful to you um, in understanding the sorts of things that can go wrong and we'll have a look at those uh, in a later video if you have a look at the Norris Health website which is norrishealth.co.uk we've got a blog section there and in the blog section we've got articles there on plantar fasciopathy we've got articles on posterior tibial tendon syndrome and we've got articles on ankle injuries so there's quite a lot of free resources there for you and um, lots more videos on our YouTube tube YouTube channel which is youtube.com forward slash Norris Health so click the subscribe button on there and you'll be informed of new material as and when we put it up okay hopefully that was useful to you